This is Diane Murray at Southern Art Gallery, and today we will be looking at Turner watercolors. <clears throat> Jerry has a great sale on the Turner watercolors right now, so I went ahead and picked up a few colors from Turner that I do not have, and one that I do. So we will look at these colors by Turner. And the first color we will be looking at is called Pearl Ocean Blue. This is a Series F. The light fastness is three stars. Transparency is a B, which I'm presuming is um, in the middle range. And it's uh, PB27, and it has mica in it, which is why I wanted to try this. Just, I think an interesting color. Um, if you don't know anything about Turner, Turner um, watercolors are made in Japan. And I have used Turner for quite a while. Um, I like their, their colors. These are the Turner colors which I currently have in my palette. The uh, Permanent Gamboge, Turmeric, Quinacridone Magenta, a cute little color called Sprout. They have a very nice green called Moss. This is Brown Matter, which I use all the time. This is their neutral tint, and that's a whole mine that goes over there. This is the Pearl Ocean Blue, and it's supposed to be, the reason I wanted this is it's supposed to be sparkly. So we will wait and see if that happens. because it has mica in it, titanium mica. The second color we'll be looking at is Burnt Sienna. It's a Series A, which means the least expensive. It has a light fastness of three stars. It's PBR7, and it has a, a transparency of A, so I presume that's a bit more transparent. So we'll look at there. I'm curious about their um, you know, the colors that I use a lot, Burnt Sienna is one of them. And I've actually, uh, have not found anything, any problems with um, Turner paints. They are very inexpensive and if you're a new, if you're new to watercolor, they are a great paint to start with. The only disadvantage, and I'm going to change to a smaller brush, the only disadvantage to the Turners that, that I'm aware of is that um, some of their colors have to have quite a few pigments in them. Now these do not. They're pure pigments, which is awesome. Um, the indigo has three pigments though. And the, the problem with getting paints, this is cerulean blue. It's a series B. It is PB36, light fastness of three, transparency of B. Let's put that out. And I'm, I'm, I always try Cerulean from different companies because Cerulean Blue is one of my favorite colors. And I just love it. It's perfect for skies and for green seas like um, where I live in the on the Gulf Coast, our water is quite blue-green sometimes. So cerulean is a perfect color for water. Okay, let's move those out of the way. And we'll open these. Now we have the indigo, <clears throat> which is a series A. It, and I, it has a light fastness of three. They all have light fastness of three. I don't exactly know what that means. I'm gonna have to look that up. Transparency of B. And their indigo is an unusual combination. It has black, which is a PBK6, a PR122, which is quinacridone magenta, and a PB15, which is thalo blue. 
too. That's a very odd combination for indigo. Indigo is another one of those colors that I have lots of different um, brands because it's, it's one of my favorite background colors and I use it all the time. That is a beautiful indigo. It is very, it's very much on the blue side though. It looks more like an indanthrine blue. My, the indigos I like tend to be a little on the green side. So, not sure about that. But it'll be good to mix with um, other colors to get a dark background, which I do a lot. This is called Freshwater. And I thought this was a curious color. It's a Series A. It is made with, oh, and I didn't write down the white on that. So, we'll correct that in a minute. It has white. It has PY42, which is usually yellow ochre and PB15. It has a transparency of C, which probably means that it is not very transparent, and usually colors that have white in them are not. But it's a beautiful color. And again, for painting seascapes, which is why I purchased this, gorgeous color, gorgeous color. And it's kind of like this color, you know, they they do some really nice mixes. The uh, paints from Japan, the Holbein's, this is Holbein over here, the Holbein's, the Turner's, um, they all seem to be more on the opaque side. And I'm not sure why that is, but um, it seems to be the case. Okay, here's the Quinacridone Magenta. It's a Series B. And it just is the one single pigment, the PR122, and that's it up here, but we'll go ahead and swatch it out. It has a transparency of A. I really like their Quinacridone Magenta a lot. I actually use this on my palette now. It's absolutely beautiful color. That is my favorite of their colors, of their pigments, is that one right there. So there you have it. Now these are Hydras down here. But these are what we have so far in Turner. Okay, let's do some mixing and see uh, what we get here. This is the um, fresh water. And I think we'll mix it with a little bit of the blue. This is the Ocean, Pearl Ocean. It's just a beautiful color. These two are, both of these colors are beautiful colors. They do have some interesting uh, color combinations in there. Oh, that's nice. Gives you kind of a gray, gray blue. Look how pretty that is. Very pretty. They do some interesting color combinations. And I really, um, I like that. It's a very pretty color. And that makes a very nice blue-gray right there. That's kind of a surprise. <clears throat> okay, let's take the Cerulean. And I'm having to use a lot of water for some reason on these paints. It could be the lights. Usually we don't have to mix quite that much. And let's mix it with the uh, burnt sienna. Let's see if we should, can get a really nice gray. And we do. A very nice um, kind of. The more you go toward the burnt sienna, the browner it will be. There's that nice gray, nice gray mix right there. Okay, that makes a nice neutral there. <clears throat> All right, let's take the indigo. It really is a beautiful color. It's 
just um some some brands have a blue or indigo though so that's not that unusual and let's to mix that with the um, burnt sienna and see what we get I really should have a bigger brush here and again we get the same similar combination of colors there so either one of those. Now look at the granulation in this indigo. Isn't that interesting? And this is the back side of my little notebook here. So the, uh, the colors aren't going to mix quite as well because of this, the paper that we're using. Okay, and that's, that's the fresh water color, which Let's take a little quinacridone magenta and see what we get. And I thought we should get a lavender. So that's usually what you get. I'm having to work these paints a little bit to get them to blend with each other. I don't know why that is truthfully but um seems to be a little more difficult than usual and that's a spot of burnt umber there so we'll ignore that this is that beautiful pearl ocean pearl color again it's wanting to leave brush marks for some reason <clears throat> I don't know exactly why that is doing that. I usually don't have any problem with these paints at all. All right, let's take Conacridone Magenta. Let's see what we get there. This is a pretty combination here. That's a nice soft gray. Oh, sorry about that. Nice soft um, gray green there. This gives us a nice purple. I was hoping it would be a little more sparkly. I don't really see the mica in this. I think they're definitely, if you are looking for a bargain watercolor, I think that would make an excellent choice. So. That being said, that's all I have today. This is actually a handmade watercolor. You can see here's the burnt sienna. This is the, um, the blue, ocean blue. This is the indigo. This is the quinacridone magenta. Here's your cerulean. And here's the uh, fresh water. So, as you can see, they're drying perfectly flat without a problem. So, um, yeah, so the problem apparently was um, inexpensive paper and fairly inexpensive paints do not combine to make a good product. So if you're going to use these, I suggest that you use a, uh, a fairly good quality paper. This is 100% cotton. And I think that's why you're seeing a better result than the, uh, the, the very inexpensive papers that, that we practice on. So you may practice on inexpensive papers, but you may find that if you actually try to do a painting, that uh, the results may turn out to be a little on the um, less desirable side. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you, and uh, we'll see you soon.